I've got a problem. No, not that one. The treatments worked. And as you can see here, I'm all better now. I mean, I've got a physical problem, specifically with high cholesterol. According to my doctor, I've got something between motor oil and candle wax pumping through my veins. The highest I've seen my total cholesterol is 520, and that was around 2004 when I had my first physical since college. I was 35 years old in 2004. This ain't 2004. This is 2024, and I'm 55 years old now, and I still haven't figured it out yet. So my plan now is to start from scratch and create the perfect solution to optimize my metabolic health. Let me tell you all about it. As I disdain medicine of all sorts, everything from aspirin to cough syrup to antibiotics to statins, my approach will continue to focus on the things outside of prescribed medicine that I can control. This means my success will be dependent on my ability to research, plan, implement, and maintain discipline. Also, there's debate around the efficacy of cholesterol medicine at even preventing heart attacks and strokes. Ultimately though, taking a statin without even knowing if there's plaque buildup just doesn't make sense to me. And amazingly, no doctor has suggested at any time that I test to see if I have plaque buildup, at least not yet, which as far as I know is the only reason to take a statin, to neutralize the negative effects of arterial plaque. Also, as far as I know, if there's no plaque buildup, there's no problem. I personally don't consider high cholesterol taken in isolation an issue. And some studies even suggest that high cholesterol levels in adults 80 and older is actually healthier for them. Now, I get it. I'm a ways away from 80 years old, but a fella can dream. I hope I get there. But all of those are discussions for a later time. For now, I'll continue moving forward as planned and for my next me as the guinea pig experiment, I'm going to focus on five areas. Physical activity, core nutrition, supplementation, rest and recovery, and environmental factors. Then for each of those areas, I'm going to address the trifecta of the past, present, and future. With the past being experience-based empirical data, the present being the current state of affairs for physiology and technology, and the future being the practical plan of action and milestones, or POAM. I've been very fortunate to not have had a cardiovascular event up until now. I think it may be in part due to my consistently engaging in intense, heavy weight training workouts for most of my life. Well, for at least as long as I can stay injury free. The injuries, yeah, they're real. Like I said, I'm 55 years old right now and I'm, I'm feeling it all. Things from 20 years ago are coming back. I remember when I... Even when I have an injury, it's, it's a problem, but it doesn't stop me. I always find a way, I always find a way to work around it or keep moving in some way. Or as my grandma would say, do what you can with what you have where you are. That's that Henderson knowledge. Undefeated, boy. Additionally, I'm also a lifetime teetotaler, having never had alcohol. And I've never smoked cigarettes or cigars or taken any kind of recreational drug including steroids. I know y'all heard me when I said intense weight training exercises for most of my life. I know what you're thinking. Anywho, this means that any systemic damage I've experienced will be due to genetics, lifestyle, and nutrition. So the objectives here are to neutralize any negative effects caused by genetics, which I don't control, and maximize the positive effects of nutrition and lifestyle, which I do control. And boy, do I have a wealth of knowledge to draw on on the nutrition side. I mean, over the years, I've tried the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet, the carnivore diet, intermittent fasting, and its offshoot, the one meal a day, the keto diet, several iterations of the low-fat, high-fat, mostly vegetables, mostly meat diets. And of course, the infamous bodybuilders, six meals a day feeding plan. Yeah, because bodybuilders don't eat, they feed, yeah. And I've also taken all manner of snake oils, vitamins, minerals, potions, and supplements. 
My body has been a virtual petri dish of experimentation for decades now, with some things being more successful than others, for sure. I have some assumptions that need to be fleshed out, but one of the assumptions I'm confident in its validity is that of the negative impact of simple sugars and carbohydrates on the microbiome and metabolic systems in general. But again, all of this is still just supposition, at least until the latest data is evaluated using the new model. I've been playing tag with death for over two decades now. And even though I've been fortunate to not have had a cardiac event up until this point, I know that I'm living with a ticking cardiac time bomb that needs to be diffused. My lab data is sourced from regular checkups, health insurance wellness programs, and out-of-pocket ad hoc lab purchases. As we take a look at the lab data, and since this is an overview, I'm going to focus on the data that's in the average column and a few of the outliers. To rapidly run through the numbers, total cholesterol, 335, HDL, 49, LDL, 216, VLDL, 48, triglycerides, 235, triglyceride to HDL ratio, five. Now for the outliers, LDL is 307, that was in 2018. HDL was 61, that was in 2022. Those are the only two columns that have outliers appear aside from 2021, which is where the bulk of the outliers lie. In 2021, I have a total cholesterol level of 484, VLDL 59, triglycerides 402, and my triglycerides to HDL ratio is 8.74. And those numbers are terrifying, but I do have a little hope because my October 2023 numbers are 298 for total cholesterol and my ratio of triglycerides to HDL is 2.1. But keep in mind, as I said earlier, high cholesterol in isolation just doesn't bother me. Now, what does bother me is inflammation, my ratio of triglycerides to HDL, and my level of insulin resistance. Those numbers are very important to me. For the triglyceride to HDL ratio, studies show a 16 times greater risk of heart disease when it's high. This ratio should be two to one or less. Now, I have to do some more research on the actual ratio because I think the Harvard study says three to one, and then I've also read two to one, and then advocates in the field that are very prominent, like Robert Lustig, he says it should be less than one. So um, I have more work to do there, but for now, I'm gonna use two to one as a happy medium with my personal goal to get it below one. Using that two to one ratio as an example, if triglycerides are 100 milligrams per deciliter, HDL should be 50 milligrams per deciliter. My last ratio from October 2023 was 2.1, which is close to spec, but keep in mind, I've been out of bounds for a long time now. I actually have to make up for lost ground, so this 2.1 number just isn't enough. I really think I need to be under one to try and maybe hopefully repair some of the damage I've done up to this point. For insulin resistance, the calculation is fasting insulin times fasting glucose. Divide that result by 405. If that calculation is greater than 1.8, you, my friend, have insulin resistance. Now for my labs, I don't have that number because it's not part of the regular lipid panel. And most doctors, they just wanna prescribe you stuff without actually putting in the work or going above and beyond what'll pass muster with the insurance companies. They just evaluate to the mean, but some of us actually need a little bit more work done, maybe a deeper dive into the numbers, maybe extra tests run to try and ferret out what the actual problem or problems are. So you may have to challenge your doctor if you think something is amiss or if you just want to have a higher level of comfort with the numbers that you're getting back and understanding the complexion of your health. All in all, my labs over the last seven years show a general decline in the negative biomarkers but I still have a long ways to go. Unfortunately, my labs only go back a few years because my healthcare provider, they switched back-end companies or software or something like that, and all of my older data is just lost in the ether somewhere. But I'm sure if they needed to use that data against me for whatever reason, they could pull that data up. I'm pretty sure they'd find it. To wrap up, I know I'm living on nearly expired or borrowed time right now. So my key takeaways are, number one, barring any shenanigans with the pending labs from the next step, my cholesterol levels are trending downward from the known all-time high of 520. 
Second, current updated lipid panel labs need to be obtained. C, the POAM or plan of action and milestones needs to be completed. And number four, this journey will continue in future videos. So feel free to tune in and tag along. And for those of you who are fighting the same or a similar battle, good luck on your health improvement journey and thanks for watching.